Hello everyone and welcome to part 2 of this week's uh, Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 update. Um, and you join me back once again on Talos and to be honest I think I am basically done with this planet. I intend, at the, basically at the beginning of the next stream I do intend to leave it. Um, but in the meantime I've been doing sort of little bits here and there to tidy it up to make, make sure things are still working properly. Whilst actually spending most of my time off on uh, looking at Norvis orbit and getting things up and working there. Because there's been there's been stuff happening in both areas and with the wonders of the navigation satellite it's quite possible to do both without too much difficulty. So this area over here, I put in this uh, storage tank here and we're filling it up whenever there's less than 10,000 in there. And that's because I realised that I hadn't been outputting the pyroflux properly from the pulverisation system down here. So this backed up and caused some issues. So now we've got the pipes coming along here. There's a pump to push it all through. Make sure this, these pipes stay empty. And that the core pulverisation is going to is going to just always work. So that's pushing it in here. Because as you may or may not remember, the um, one of the steps of the beryllium... Um, processing. Once you've got this beryllium powder you can either cook it with coal and sand directly in a, in, a, um, in a casting machine to get the ingots or if you want to actually do things a bit more efficiently you can pass it through an industrial furnace first and that requires the pyroflux but it does mean you get more of it out, something like twice as much I think and you can shove in a load of um, productivity modules and it gets you even even more out. So it's a, it's a much better way of dealing with it and so we're, we much prefer that one. We can also, it's also notable that down here you'll see these, this, this production system and this one have both stopped now. And that's because we filled up this chest down here which is designed to provide a bit of a buffer. Then it's backed up all the way up here, up here, up here, all the way to this chest which is the uh, a secondary buffer. Or maybe this is the primary buffer and the one down there is the secondary buffer. And the idea behind this is that this will this will hopefully this will fill up to an extent. It will fill up, and then when there's a when there's a burst of demand from the guns down here, we'll push a load of beryllium down this belt here. But first, the first priority will always be taken from this chest, and we've got the priority set here and here on these splitters to ensure it gets taken from the correct place. And that is because, as I've been as I've said many times before, this is the area up here that's being fed from the core fragments, and core fragments will just keep coming and coming and coming. We're never going to run out of them. Um, they just come in at a steady a steady rate. Whereas the barrel ore that comes from the mines, we can dig up basically as fast as we want to, but the mines will eventually run out and I'll have to go out and put more of them in. So we'd rather we'd rather so we'd rather use the uh, core mine core fragments first and then use the uh, the beryllium or the barrel ore to catch up as and when we we, we realize we've run out of others run out of the it from the other ones because it's not fast enough. And at the moment we're not actually getting through the beryllium all that quickly because we're doing a little bit of astroscience and we're not building spaceships or, any, or doing anything else that just chugs through it at a, at a rate. So at the moment, this is more than fast enough, and we've got this big buffer uh, to keep to keep us tight to tide us over until we need to, until we need to start producing it um, in, 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 uh, from other places in larger quantities. Uh, I did mention that I fixed the sand belt, so we, as, I, I, th I think I, I said we've got the two two belts coming in here, this one and this one, that are feeding in the sand from um, that's, that's coming from all the processing, and also probably from the pulverization here. How how are we even doing this? We're pulverizing it in here, and then yes, it's being fed out onto the onto the sand belt along here so that gets that runs down goes into the chest all of the stone goes in there but we've got this one being set to only run if there's less than 2,000 in the in in the uh, in the chest down here so the idea being with this that we we bring this we brought brought the supply of stone up here from the pulverization because we get you get loads of stone out from pulverizing core fragments we've got plenty of it available um, but most of it so we've got a, we've got some of it available on this belt and we can use that if we have a shortage of sand but if we don't have a shortage of sand then it'll it'll fill up and then we can ship it down through here through this splitter into here to be turned into sand to be cooked into glass and shipped off to Norvis. Great. I had to do quite a lot of fiddling with this to get it working nicely because for some reason it had all jammed up. But one of the main reasons was because the uh, the copper would the copper had fed back all the way up here, and that was because they weren't. In, the, the, so I fixed that by putting in the speed modules, which got it to cook the copper a bit more quickly, and that seems to have basically fixed it. That and having extra storage space for glass over on Norvis has meant this 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 area is now working nicely. It just took. It took a bit of fiddling to get it there, if I'm being honest. <laughs> oh dear. I also fixed the uh, the filter system. So as you may may remember from last week's video, was it, it was the the mine down here, I think. Yes, this one had far too many filters, far more than it knew what to do with, um, because I hadn't joined this the cable from here to here. So it was forever asking for another train and another train and another train and another train, and the train was always turning up here, unloading clean filters onto this belt. They get taken away, um, and the, so it, it eventually filled up the belt completely because there wasn't any room in here to unload the clean filters, and also we had a massive backlog of dirty filters as well that we weren't getting rid of. So in order to fix that, I've come in here, I've, I've reprogrammed it to, uh, to, to, be, to be limited to here, but more importantly I've, fixed, I've linked it up across here. Now we can, all, we can um, 
we can summon a train just out to to demonstrate how the system works because it's going to take a little while for this to return to normal um, basically what's going to happen is that gradually these filters that are in here are going to get gradually dirtied and move from this side to this side when we eventually get down to having almost having fewer than 50 clean filters in here it will call a train much as I've just done now manually and it will get rid of all of the dirty filters and will then have will then be at the position where, where where it's like everything else it'll have the right number of filters and we won't have this ridiculous problem again it is going to take quite a long time to get through and dirty up all of these filters but that doesn't really matter in order to make sure that would work, I put in quite a lot of extra slots for the dirty filters. So the train turns up here, as you can see. It's unloading a few clean filters, which is a little bit unfortunate. It's going to unload all hundred of them. and How many? Oh yeah, so it's unloaded a hundred of them. And now we're pulling some more in off the belt for coming up from here. So... Yes, we did We did fill this up with an extra 100 filters, which is a bit of a shame, but we're getting rid of all of the dirty filters, and the train can now can now head off. And we've got a little bit more space available in here, and that means we're able to pull in some more of these filters around like this. Uh, the problem with this, it's just occurred to me, is that we might run into an issue where we can't, we, where we're no longer able to unload, put, put the dirty filters in there. However, there seem to be a couple on the opposite side of the belt, and so that has jammed up the inserter. So it's going to wait until one of the, until this empties out onto, uh, out over this way, as it's doing gradually at the moment. Twenty. Eventually, eventually that'll empty out, and then we'll pull in those two filters, and that uh, all those dirty filters, and that will then reserve one of the slots in here for dirty filters, and the system can actually carry on running. So that was actually quite fortuitous. It's lucky there were a couple of a couple that were technically on the wrong side of the belt, um, because that has allowed everything to sort of get to a, a slightly more stable position. I'm I'm rather surprised that happened, but uh, anyway, I'm not I'm not going to complain too much because it has it has fixed it, and now as you can see, we've only got a few filters left on this side, and eventually eventually the whole system will will end up back in a, in a sort of a, a tidy stable state. I've also gone around all of the uh, outposts I've got. So this one's a mine outpost. There are various other ones scattered around the uh, around the map that have uh, that, that are doing the uh, the core mining as well. Um, and I've put in roboports in them. And each of these roboports has got a relatively small number of robots and a load of um, repair packs. And that means that when when we get these occasional exploratory attacks from the biters and they come out and have a little bit of an investigate of one of my um, uh, one one of my outposts. We can then repair everything that's good. We can then repair the outpost from any damage they do. I can't actually see the roboport in this one. There it is. Um, yeah, so you see, there's only four robots in here. I think we might have lost some because I tried to put about nine or ten into each one. But oh well, so lovely. I've also put in more lasers around them, and hopefully, we've now got enough um, enough air filters in all of them. Yeah. So as you can see, if I, if I now look at it, you can see that all of these have been cleaned up. Um, we've got a little bit of, of pollution along the railway lines, a little bit around the um, in, inside the main factory area up here. But essentially, especially now that these mines have stopped running, we're now able to, we've been able to completely clean up the air around them. So the, uh, the air clean up, clean, Operation Cleanup has been a massive success. We are now no longer blowing pollution out over the entire planet, which should mean the biters will be much, much calmer. And we won't have any issues with them, except when we do, um, <laughs> when we do artillery range researches, because we do still have the nuclear artillery over here, right, uh, right in the middle of the base. And that means next time we do an artillery range upgrade, this circle here will get a little bit bigger and then we'll end up shelling this nest down here and so there'll be a bit of an attack will come in from there. But we can we have we we're easily able to cope with that with the amount of wall we with the amount of wall defence we have going on. So I'm not too worried about it. And that is all I did on ta uh, on Talos. So my, my next plan is going to be to get into this into this rocket capsule here, fly up into space to Talos orbit. Get back in the get back in the, uh, the, sh the ship, which is still called the Misfortune, and fly back over to Norvis uh, to uh, Norvis orbit to get on with more sciencing over there. Because I find I, I, I'm one of those people who likes to get their hands on the on whatever it is they're building rather than doing it remotely from a from a million miles away. I find it I find it much much easier that way. <clears throat> over on Taras, uh, Mark has finished off and, and, and uh, as, as we said, and then sort of left. So apparently he's disconnected some steam battery boilers. So. Um, yeah, over here, all of these are now short of power, which is absolutely fine because these ones are more than capable of filling up these tanks before the next um, coronal mass ejection arrives, and that means he's now got enough power here to keep his to keep the system, to keep everything running, and not and, and not have brownouts where where excess amounts of stuff gets delivered. Because as you might remember, he was having a problem where this this delivery cannon chest was getting bombarded with resources because there was some pro it was programmed incorrectly on Norvis and it was losing power and not sending the signal out and everything went wrong and uh, and things were getting blown up so that was um entertaining but uh, it's, it's it's kind of fixed now
So Tristan has put in some um, additional delivery cannons over here to, uh, I think pro probably this one to take the uh, to take the crystals over to to Norbit orbit to, uh, to for, for use in making quantum processors. And he's put in some um, plate cannons that are taking out the uh, taking um, the Im Im immers immersion plates over to uh, over to Norvis for to be put on the bus and presumably to be made into all the green belts. And so that's why suddenly there's a bit of a shortage of them. Um, we have quite a lot of immersite being produced from here, but uh, we're also getting through quite a lot of it as well. So, uh, what I was saying um, earlier yesterday about um, just it just needing us to bring a load of extra immersite over in a spaceship for, to get um, Mike's material science packs all up and running and nice, nice and quickly might have been slightly optimistic. We might be a bit shorter of these uh, immersite crystals than I realised we were. So. We'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll find out where the demand is and whether we need to increase the, the supply even further on this planet. While I was here, did I set a delivery cannon to ship them to a... Yes, I did. So down here, we've got a, we've got a rank of, um, of, three, of three delivery cannons down here. And I've hooked up these two, and the cable just takes a little bit of a snaking route. So the cable goes round here, down across up here, and goes to this receiver. And that's the one that's from Agnea. So we have now have the capability of shipping out sulfur to Agnea, because Agnea is the planet where we do all of the... Um, vulcanite production and that gets through quite a lot of, um, of, of sulfur so I've, I've, I've said we want to bring lots and lots of it over here and then we can ship it down this belt over to here and we can start and we, and we can use that to cook the cook the cook the uh, the vulcanite that we're going to that we're going to need in, in enormous quantities and this seems to have jammed up hmm. yes we seem to have had we seem to have a jam problem down here as well I shall come back and have a look at that in a moment so previously we were making the sulfur from um, from oil but oil is a limited resource on this planet yes there is quite a lot of it we have a, oh, that's a lot of pollution <laughs> it's okay. It's a friendly planet. It doesn't matter. So down here, we yes, we do have um, almost. We have we have more than two million oils. So it would last for a very very long time. But I thought eventually that will run out. Let's bring it over from a planet that's producing crazy quantities of it instead, and we can and we can then uh, and then we'll have an un basically an unlimited supply of it available. So what's going wrong down here? Why why what, what? Okay, we've got too much copper. That's an interesting problem to have. Possibly because we have too much petroleum gas. Okay, so the problem was that I turned the um, the inserters around here, and so they weren't producing. For some reason, I, I don't know why, but I deactivated these inserters, so they weren't bringing in the um, uh, pulling in 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 the stone plate and the steel plates that were needed in order to make the heat shield tiles that are needed to make the delivery cannon capsules, and we also weren't getting any delivery cannon uh, capsules brought in. I'm a bit bemused by what could have what why why that was set up like that it's a bit of a mystery but hopefully that'll pass these round to here we can then start that they'll then go into the um, delivery cannon chest here and we can start putting them into these machines and start making the um, yes there we go and start making the uh, delivery cannon capsules again um, that will mean we'll start using the copper which means we'll start using the copper ore which means we'll start being able to flow stuff through here again um, I'm a bit. I, I don't know. I, I don't really understand why we stopped using those. Was it? Oh, I bet it was because we need. Did we need the steel for something else? Yes, we've got the steel, the steel supply coming out here and being. Ah, oh, yes, and we're using it for barreling up the um, uh, the Vulcan, the um, not the Vulcanite, the uh, Pyroflux, and getting rid of that, and also for for nuclear power down here. So I don't know if this is going to then be a problem again. Uh, we, or whether we're going to need more iron ore that we don't have. Um, Right, well, we've, I've turned that back on again. I guess we'll find out if it fails again for other reasons. Uh, in the meantime, we do seem to have plenty. We've got almost 40,000 um, Vulcanite over here. And this system has been running absolutely fine because it's been running off the uh, off the mines rather than off the core mining. It's just this bit that's, that's all jammed up. And so we're, we have, we're, all, of, all of our Vulcanite is now... Or no, yeah, all of our Vulcanite is now being produced the expensive way, which is not ideal. We need to... Yeah, we need to pull through from here. We need to get rid of the get rid of all this uh, all of this nonsense as we're doing now. And there we go. You can see you can see the system is running properly again. Although now a load of copper has come in, it's jammed back up again. So that's a bit of a weird one. Um, this is what happens when I when I uh, go in here and I try uh, I start th and I have clever ideas like I know I'll pull off the uh, pull from the uh, steel supply that's coming out that's there for the for making the delivery cannon capsules in order to make barrels to ship out the pyroflux. It causes it, it, it throws the whole system out of balance and, and gives us issues. But the good news is that down here we're then able to demolish all of that sand and and, and get rid of everything else that's coming through here. Um, but it's a little bit a little bit of a concern that we're not getting any iron ore through down here. So I think I'll have to. Do that again in the in the the real game, and then come back and invest and, and again, try and remember to keep an eye on it and make sure that things continue to work nicely, TM. Because that's a bit of a yeah, a bit of a worry. 
But anyway, yes, this is where the sulfur is coming. So we've <laughs> I sort of sorted that out from um, from Taros because it seemed like a much better use for it. Next up, over on uh, Drakit, Tristan has gone in and done some improvements to the um, to the cryonite production. So the cryonite production was the limiting factor for uh, for the for the beryllium for quite a long time. It's not anymore, and I don't know whether that's because we're making the beryllium more slowly, or whether it's because Tristan's increased the um, supply of, py of cryonite. But it could be a bit of each, to be honest. So he basically came in and he extended this system along here. I think he put in extra extra furnaces and more uh, red uh, productivity modules. So he's improved the uh, the design of this system quite a bit. And so we've now got quite a lot more cryonite coming out than we did before. Coming up here. And it is now going into to attempting to keep all the delivery cannons satisfied. And see, that one appears to be running. That one appears to be running. Uh, and and that, no, not that one. So there's yeah, there's quite there's there's quite a lot of demand for cryonite, uh, which is why Tristan's gone. Well, okay, we've got we've got quite a bit of cryonite coming from this planet, but in, but I think I'm going to head off to Snowdrop, which is another planet way out into the um, distant dim and distant corners of the planet. And Tristan has landed on this planet, but he hasn't actually done anything here yet. So he's come out here, he's done a load of exploring, uh, he's landed here, but he hasn't called in a rocket full of stuff yet. He's going to eventually. Um, to essentially, this is going to be his Agnea. In the same way that I started off by going to Taishakutan and getting some Vulcanite from there, and then going, oh, this planet isn't big enough, it's not producing enough, and went off to Agnea to build a much, much bigger setup. Uh, Tristan went off to uh, Drakit and set up a Cryonite production facility there. It took longer to discover that that wasn't enough, because you get through a lot more Vulcanite than you do with the Cryonite. So he has now come out to um, he has now come out to Snowdrop, which is a much bigger uh, Cryonite planet. In fact, if I find, find Snowdrop here and increase its score like that, we can then compare, compare the two a little bit more easily. So as you can see here, um, Drakit is 490, it's just under 500 in diam in, in radius, whereas Snowdrop is just under 4,000 in radius, so it's uh, it's almost eight, it's about eight times as big, and so or eight times the, the diameter, so it's going to be produ presumably producing something, we, we, well let's just assume it's going to produce at least 16 times as much um, cryonite, and it's going, to, it's going to be a lot more, um, that said the mines are going to be for more spaced out especially once you start getting away from the centre so it might be quite a, quite an effort to get enough to get more cryonite out of it but it does also have patches like this 44 million cryonite patch here and it's also 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 a peaceful planet so he's not going to have too much trouble exp uh, spreading out as much as he wants and, and setting up lots and lots of um, lots and lots of new new uh, new mining facilities new processing facilities and so on so yeah we're going to get a lot more cryonite coming in he's even got water the lucky wasp name because uh, to keep to keep his uh, to keep everything running although we may try and discourage him from using free power because we think that might be what tanks our ups <laughs> Speaking of UPS, we did a little bit of further research in the, uh, in the during the last uh, or just before the last stream, and it seems to be streaming that tanks my UPS the most. That's what brings it down from about 50 to about 30 something. Um, so we're playing with that fairly carefully. We're also going to be trying. We also discovered that switching over to using warehouses may made very very little difference to our to, to uh, how fast the game was running. Um, the warehouses didn't seem to be having all that much effect. I reckon a big part of it is going to be the the large free power systems we've been setting up, the ones that produce and burn the biomethanol. Um, because they are, there's a lot of there's a lot of fluid handling going on in those. So our medium and long term plans are essentially to going to, still going to be to try and get rid of those as and when we can. But that's going to be a big job and rather tricky because they are currently powering most of our uh, factory infrastructure. So, because in the last episode we all spent our time, most of our time in safe places, although I didn't actually, I was running around on Talos a bit, and there are biters there, as we discovered last week. Um, but we didn't have any deaths, so the uh, the death counter scores remain uh, much as they did before. And that brings us neatly to the end of the episode. So, as always, thank you for watching. Please check out the uh, channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. If you use the code LAWRENCEPLAYS on checkout, you can get 20% off your first month of um, Factorio or Minecraft or whatever else hosting. Uh, and we shall be back on Monday with another stream where we shall be solving some of the problems I've been talking about today and trying to push the boundaries of science back even further. I shall then be returning again on Wednesday for the XCOM stream where we are now on the basically the last piece of storyline research which means we can then go off take out we can then hopefully take the fight to the alien base out on Mars and go and um, maybe actually finish the game if we're really lucky we'll see, we shall see how that goes. Uh, and in the meantime, there will be, of course, the catch-up videos on Friday and Saturday and random other um, Factorio-related videos on, on every Tuesday. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of those. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.